Bonjour tout le monde. Hi golfers. Welcome to week four of our golf and fitness program. Uh, Marc-André Piet joining you from the fitting center te teaching facility here at Highlands Golf Club. Uh, we're excited to have you guys for uh, our fourth week of instruction. So hopefully you will benefit from the uh, stretching and strength exercises that Derek gave you in the last couple weeks. This week we're going to tackle now uh, talking about more weight distribution at address. Again, a, a fundamental in terms of posture and also how much knee flex we should have at address. So uh, just to get back to what we've discussed about in the previous weeks, we've talked an awful lot about posture and the importance of setting up, the, setting up over the ball with, while engaging the right group of muscles. When it, when it comes to uh, weight distribution, uh, same idea. Again, a key element to how we're going to set up over the ball. So what we want to make sure we do is we want to make sure that our center of gravity falls right at the right place, which is right over our shoelaces. So if I'm addressing the golf ball properly, again, if we remember what we've discussed about, we're going to hinge from the hips while keeping our spine neutral. And then from here, I want to just slightly unlock my knees forward that way. So my weight comes right Right over my shoelaces so I don't want to be sitting further back and have all my weight in my butt or in my heels but I also don't want to have too much weight forward in my toes um, what we like to talk about when it comes to weight distribution like golf is a sport like no others and then you want to have the weight into an active position so you watch any sport on TV you'll never see um, a, an athlete sitting into a passive position that is not ready for action. So really, really want to make sure that we have our weight here somewhere over our shoelaces and then we're active and ready to go into that posture. And from here, we can take a confident swing and then make a good strike. So Derek is going to follow up with good instruction with you uh, to help you guys with that proper weight distribution and setup. And we'll see you guys next week. Welcome back CAF members, Derek, FSI, TPI certified coach here with you for week four, part two, which is gonna be the strength portion or the corrective exercise portion of your weight distribution uh, fundamentals part of the, the, the program here. So like we said earlier, Marc-Andre talked about the importance of the hips, which we covered last week, hip hinge the knees and the ankles, how they move well in terms of getting you into a proper position when it comes to weight distribution, where you want your weight to lie uh, in terms of your setup position and all the way through your golf swing. So what we're gonna give you today is gonna be corrective exercises that will strengthen around the ankles, around the knees and around the hips for you to get into those positions more easily and with more comfort. So the first exercise we're gonna do, very simple exercise. You can grab anything at home that will elevate your toes to start. It has to be something stable. So it could be a book. It could, you could do this hanging off the edge of the stair, but this one's called a heel raise and calf drop. So we wanna work on both ranges, the extension and the flexion of the ankle. So I'm gonna put my toes, I have them on a plate here, but like I said, you can use a staircase at home, you can use a book, something at least two to three inches off the ground. Here I am in the heel drop position. So I'm in ankle flexion. My, I'm bending at the ankle, uh, the, the angle is closed, and we're gonna go from heel flexion to calf extension, okay? So getting as high as I can, engaging the calf muscles before I come back down to that drop. And then we're gonna repeat, okay? So we're going for three sets of 12 reps of these. Hanging on the way down and then pushing up on the way up. You can go as slow as you want uh, back and forth between them, but don't hold for too long. We're doing both legs at the same time for this exercise. Number two is gonna involve a little bit of flexibility as well. This one's called toes up or toes elevated reverse toe toucher. So we're gonna to put our toes up onto that same object, whether it's a stair. Uh, it's probably easier if you put it up onto something on the ground though that's stable. So it could be a book or a towel. Toes are gonna to be up, feet are together. What we're gonna to look to do here is send the hips back and keep the back flat for as long as we can. Feel a nice stretch in the hamstring and the calf as we reach down. And once you get to a point where your back 
can't stay flat anymore. At that point, you can reach down towards your toes, try and touch your toes, and then come back up. So it's hips back, back flat. When the back doesn't stay flat anymore, then you can reach down and round a little bit to get to your toes and stand back up. If you can't quite get to your toes, just take notice on how low you can go, keeping the legs straight, okay, between set one and set three. Is there gonna be a difference? I guarantee you that there will be. You're gonna do three sets of 12 reps when it comes to that exercise. The next one, deep squat progression. Okay, one of my favorites here because we work on ankle mobility, we work on knee flexion, we work on hip mobility. So we're trying to get as low as we can in our squat. I want you to elevate your heels. So put your heels up onto something. This might be a little narrow. You might wanna get something that's underneath or slightly wider than shoulder width. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna go down into a squat position where I'm sitting back on my heels, I'm pushing my knees out, one hand to the ground, I'm gonna rotate up with one hand, and then I'm gonna rotate up with the other hand, and from there I stand up. That's one repetition. You're gonna do 10 of those. Sitting back with the hips first, trying to keep the back flat. Weight is on the heel here. That's why the elevated heel is a nice position. It makes it a little bit easier. If you wanna make this a little bit harder, you can lose the plate, okay? And you can do the same thing, feet just outside shoulder width, down into the bottom of the squat, one hand on the ground, reach, reach, always looking at the hand that you are rotating with. Number four, we have a lateral lunge. So a lateral lunge, you're moving side to side with this one and we're working on the flexibility of the medial part or the inside part of the hamstring while loading the hip and the knee and the ankle on the opposite side. So it's gonna look like this. You're gonna step out to the side, a nice wide stance, send the hips back and down. Weight should be on the heel, driving the knees out, hands out in front of you for uh, stability, and then you're gonna stand back up, feet come together. You can either alternate sides or you can just go for 10 on one side, just like this, where I push myself back to standing, keeping that chest tall, weights on the heel. I can go for 10 on one side and 10 on the other side. Totally up to you. If you feel you're a little bit weaker through the legs, maybe you alternate back and forth. If you're somebody who can sustain a little more volume on one side, then you do all of one side and then switch to the other side. Exercise number five, we have a lateral step up. So you're gonna need something to elevate. It doesn't have to be a box, it's 20 inches like this. It could be something lower to start. But what you're gonna do is, one foot is gonna be on the box, other foot on the ground, okay? And you're gonna be sort of, the toes are gonna be pretty close to being in line with each other. This ankle's already gonna be in flexion, knee in flexion, hip in flexion we're gonna try and get all of these two extensions. So I'm gonna lean my weight to the left side. I'm gonna stand up on the box completely, send my hips back and down and come back down to the ground. So shift my weight left, stand, I squeeze my butt and back down. I can use my hands to give myself a little bit of momentum on the way up. What I don't want is the knee to collapse in as I stand up or as I come down. So I'm always focusing on pushing the knee out, engaging the glute muscle, and then coming back down. So I'm gonna do 10 on one side, 10 on the other side for three sets. Your last one's going to be a lateral skater jump. Okay, so a lateral skater jump. This can be done two ways. The first way, a little bit easier because you don't, it doesn't require stability as much. You're gonna push off the one side, we're jumping laterally, and the other foot comes to the ground. Okay, so this one's gonna help balance. My back foot comes behind the opposite foot and it helps with the balancing. If you wanna make it a little bit more challenging, you can jump and try and balance. Jump and try and balance, keeping that chest tall going side to side, 
You want to make it more challenging? You just jump a bit further and you catch, you receive in a flexed hip, a flexed knee, and a flexed ankle position. Those are six corrective exercises for you to start strengthening through the ankle, the knee, and the hip to allow you to get into a better position when it comes to weight distribution in your address position in your golf swing. We'll see you next week.